Pope Pius XI, Excerpts from Divini Redemptoris, 1937. Venerable Brethren, Health and Apostolic Benediction. The promise of a Redeemer brightens the first page of the history of mankind, and the confident hope aroused by this promise softened the keen regret for a paradise which had been lost. It was this hope that accompanied the human race on its weary journey, until, in the fullness of time, the expected Savior came to begin a new universal civilization, the Christian civilization. Nevertheless, the struggle between good and evil remained in the world as a sad legacy of the original fall. Nor has the ancient tempter ever ceased to deceive mankind with false promises. It is on this account that one convulsion following upon another has marked the passage of the centuries down to the revolution of our own days. This modern revolution threatens everywhere, and it exceeds in amplitude and violence anything yet experienced in the preceding persecutions launched against the Church. Entire peoples find themselves in danger of falling back into a barbarism worse than that which oppressed the greater part of the world at the coming of the Redeemer. This all-too-imminent danger is Bolshevistic and atheistic communism, which aims at upsetting social order and Christian civilization. In the face of such a threat, the Catholic Church could not and does not remain silent. This apostolic see, above all, has not refrained from raising its voice, for it knows that its proper and social mission is to defend truth, justice, and all those eternal values which communism ignores or attacks. Ever since the days when groups of intellectuals were formed in an arrogant attempt to free civilization from the bonds of morality and religion, our predecessors overtly and explicitly drew the attention of the world to the consequences of the de-Christianization of human society. With reference to communism, our venerable predecessor Pius IX, as early as 1846, pronounced a solemn condemnation which he confirmed in the words of the syllabus directed against that infamous doctrine of so-called communism which is absolutely contrary to the natural law itself and if once adopted, would utterly destroy the rights, property, and possessions of all men, and even society itself. Later on, another of our predecessors, the immortal Leo XIII in his encyclical, Quad Apostolicae Muneris, defined communism as the fatal plague which insinuates itself into the very marrow of human society, only to bring about its ruin. With clear intuition, he pointed out that the atheistic movements existing among the masses of the machine age had their origin in that school of philosophy which for centuries had sought to divorce science from the life of the faith and of the church. During our pontificate, we too have frequently and with urgent insistence denounced the current trend to atheism, which is alarmingly on the increase. The most persistent enemies of the church who from Moscow are directing the struggle against Christian civilization, themselves bear witness by their unceasing attacks in word and act that even to this hour the papacy has continued faithfully to protect the sanctuary of the Christian religion and that it has called public attention to the perils of communism more frequently and more effectively than any other public authority on earth. In the doctrine of communism, there is no room for the idea of God, there is no difference between matter and spirit, between soul and body. There is neither survival of the soul after death, nor any hope in a future life. Communism, moreover, strips man of his liberty, robs human personality of all its dignity, and removes all the moral restraints that check the eruptions of blind impulse. There is no recognition of any right of the individual in his relations to the collectivity. No natural right is accorded to human personality, which is a mere cogwheel in the communist system. Refusing to human life any sacred or spiritual character, such a doctrine logically makes of marriage and the family a purely artificial and civil institution, the outcome of a specific economic system. There exists no matrimonial bond of a juridical moral nature that is not subject to the whim of the individual or of the collectivity. Naturally, therefore, the notion of an indissoluble marriage tie is scouted. 
Communism is particularly characterized by the rejection of any link that binds woman to the family and the home, and her emancipation is proclaimed as a basic principle. She is withdrawn from the family and the care of her children to be thrust instead into public life and collective production under the same conditions as man. The care of the home and children then devolves upon the collectivity. Finally, the right of education is denied to parents, for it is conceived as the exclusive prerogative of the community in whose name and by whose mandate alone parents may exercise this right. In this battle, joined by the powers of darkness against the very idea of divinity, it is our fond hope that besides the host which glories in the name of Christ, all those, and they comprise the overwhelming majority of mankind, who still believe in God and pay him homage, may take a decisive part. We cannot conclude this encyclical letter without addressing some words to those of our children who are more or less tainted with the communist plague. We earnestly exhort them to hear the voice of their loving Father. We pray the Lord to enlighten them that they may abandon the slippery path which will lead one and all to ruin and catastrophe, and that they recognize that Jesus Christ, our Lord, is their only Savior. For there is no other name under heaven given to man whereby we must be saved. To hasten the advent of that peace of Christ in the kingdom of Christ, so ardently desired by all, we place the vast campaign of the Church against world communism under the standard of St. Joseph, her mighty protector. He belongs to the working class, and he bore the burdens of poverty for himself and the Holy Family, whose tender and vigilant head he was. To him was entrusted the Divine Child when Herod loosed his assassins against him. In a life of faithful performance of everyday duties, he left an example for all those who must gain their bread by the toil of their hands. He won for himself the title of the just, serving thus as a living model of that Christian justice which should reign in social life. Venerable brethren, nothing remains but to raise our paternal hands to call down upon you, upon your clergy and people, upon the whole Catholic family, the apostolic benediction. Given at Rome, at St. Peter's, on the Feast of St. Joseph, patron of the Universal Church, on the 19th of March, 1937, the 16th year of our pontificate.